In this video, we'll talk about tokens. Specifically, I'll show you how to create custom tokens for your player characters. I'll show you how to link them to a character sheet so that the appropriate attributes and abilities are displayed. We'll also see how to create MOOC tokens, so if you change the HP of one monster, it doesn't change the HP of all those monsters on the board. And finally, I'll show you how to automate this process if you have a pro account. And if you want to jump to a particular topic, there are timestamp jump links down in the description below. Alright, so let's start out with how to create a token. So you've got this brand new character who's going to be joining your campaign, and your player sends you a link to a URL. They say they want this image to be their character. All right, fine. So we're just going to right click on this. We're going to say save image as, and we're going to save this somewhere on our computer. Okay, so we've got our, our image here. And now what we're going to do is go out to this website, Token Stamp 2. And I'm going to put a link to this down in the description below. And what we're going to do is just drag the image onto the palette here. And then we can resize it, make it bigger, get a nice headshot going on. And then we can do a few other things. We could change the border here, like if I want a thinner border around my token. And maybe I want the border color to be this nice blue. There we go. And so this preview window is showing me what my token's going to look like. And that looks pretty good. I like that. So I'm just going to say download now. And that pulls the token image down to my computer. Okay, cool. So let's turn this into an actual token. So I'm going to go back into my game. And I'm going to drag that image onto the board in Roll20. And that'll upload it. There we go. I'm going to resize it down so it's appropriate for the grid. And let's actually zoom in on the grid a little bit here so this is easier to see. All right, and then I'm just going to double click on the token. So now we're going to say this token represents our cleric, whose name is Cardigan. And bar one of our cleric, we want that to be his HP. So I'm going to select that. I want bar two to be his AC. And then bar three will be his passive wisdom. I, I like having that available so I can kind of keep tabs on what my players have for passive perception. And then with that, I'm going to go over to the Advanced tab because Cardigan here is an ASMR who has dark vision. So I'm going to say that he has sight out to 60 feet. We'll save changes. And there we go. Now Cardigan is all set up. What I need to do now is open up Cardigan's character sheet, go to Edit, and say Use Selected Token. And then we'll save changes. Okay, and now, if I delete this off the board and drag out a new cardigan, you can see he's resized properly, and he's got all the attributes still set, and his dark vision is, is queued up there. So all that is good to go. Okay, now, let's talk about monsters. If you're using the SRD version of Roll20, that is the free version of Roll20, or if you've created your own custom monsters, like I have, this Nertha Willem, this is a monster that I invented. I'm gonna drag that onto the board, and you'll notice now if I drag multiple Nertha Willems onto the board, and I change the HP of one of them, it changes the HP for both of them. And the reason for that is, on these tokens, they're linked to the character sheet. So this token, and this token are both linked back to the original character sheet, so they're reading the properties off of that character sheet. What that means is if I change the HP of one of these, I'm actually going to be changing it for all of them. You can see I made the change there and it's showing up over here. So what we want to do for monsters is not have the HP be linked. Just unlink this completely, have it set to be none. And now, when I save changes, if I update this one again, let's take away another 20 hit points, you see that this one went down to 35, this one stayed at 55. So what I do at this point is, now that I've made that change, right? I would, I would come back in here, I would set this back up to 99, back up to maximum, and then go into my creature, edit it, and remove the existing token that was linked to the character sheet, and now have that one that's updated highlighted, say you selected token, save changes. Okay, so that one now, if I drag out 
new Nertha Willem. So let me do that right here and right here. And I say drop this one by 30 hit points. You see the other ones were not affected. So if you do find that a group of monsters HP is changing when you're intending to just change one monster's HP, that's all you need to do is unlink the HP in the token. Now, again, if you're using tokens from the monster manual or from some other compendium that you've purchased off of Roll20, all those tokens typically come with that setting already taken care of for you. So you'll really only need to do this if you are using the free version of Roll20 or if you've invented your own monster. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how you can automate some of this setup. So if you are a pro subscriber, you have access to the Roll20 API. And there's a script in the Roll20 API library called Token Mod, which excels at automating token actions. If you're not familiar with how to install a script into your game, I'm going to pop a card up in the top right of the screen. Click on that. It'll take you to another one of my videos that shows you how to install a script. Uh, but basically, what you'd want to do, let's say that uh, you want to set up another character here. Maybe your, your player says, you know what? I, I changed my mind. I don't want to use this image for a cardigan. I, I want to use a, a different one. So you set up your your other token, you know, you, you upload it into the system like I'm about to do here. There we go. So I've resized it. I'm going to double click on this guy. I'm going to set it so it's equal to cardigan. There we go. Save changes. And now I can just run this macro here. And you can see it automatically set all those things for me. So here we see the HP, the AC, the passive wisdom score, and the dark vision stuff is all here. And Macro also set Cardigan to have that new token as the default. So how did I do that? Well, let me go ahead and pull up that macro so you can see what it looks like. So like I said, this is using token mod. And I'm going to zoom in on this so it's a little easier to read here. All right. So what we're saying here is token mod. That's our first bit here. Set bar one link HP. That's connecting the tokens bar one to the HP on the character sheet. And then we do the same thing for the AC and the passive wisdom. We're setting the name of the token to be the name of the character that we specified. And then we also have the bars and auras. Those are being turned off. And that's basically the default properties of the, the token itself. Also, I have to scroll and, and then I'll zoom back in here. We see that we've turned on the site. So the player has sight. The radius of that site is 60 feet. Other players do not see that light, and we've set it to be the default token. So all those things have been done for us using that macro. So I'm going to put the text of that macro down in the description below, so you can just copy and paste that. But this way, you can come in here, and just with one click, you get all of that stuff taken care of for you automatically. All right, so we've looked at a bunch of token operations today. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.